Thank you and it's good afternoon. Um, I'll be talking to you about the diverse topics of plate tectonics, Joe Duffy and Liveline, um, the jumbo breakfast roll and how that relates to your critical infrastructure. And more importantly, I'll surround it by this most vicious of uh, Trojans that's emerged. And I don't think anybody technically in the room here could probably challenge me on this particular one. It's uh, the JCB Trojan. Um, I'll come to it slightly later, but it is a very uh, brutal, blunt force instrument when it comes to um, network security threats. So we'll come to that slightly later, but it kind of give you a background in terms of a topic that's not often discussed at these events, is the physical security of your network. So a little bit of background about Magnus, um, and broadly speaking, a business going for just on seven years, um, owned by a US investment firm. We have um, invested in the Irish economy, there's about a quarter of a billion invested quietly. Um, primarily deploying next gen, next gen being fiber based technologies primarily. Uh, fiber either in and around Dublin. Um, we have fiber to the home developments here, actually even in Malahide. Um, just up through the village, um, homes capable of receiving 100 meg, 200 meg, gigabit speeds. Not that that necessarily pleases all the occupants of Malahide and people like Paul, etc. Um, but we have been doing um, fiber to the home for just over five and a half, nearly six years. Um, we also have um, the transatlantic network. So part of the family of businesses that Magnet's part of, our sister business is Hibernia Atlantic. So some of you who are coming from the corporate world may recognize the brand um, Hibernia Atlantic. And so not far from here, we have two transatlantic cables that connect Ireland. So they're the only direct fiber links across the seabed to North America. So those cables leave Baldoil, for those familiar with the uh, geolo geography around here, and Sutton. So the one cable heads out north around Northern Ireland, the other cable heads south around Wexford, off to the US. So when I mention things about plague tectonics, uh, not only do we worry about the last mile into your home, we also worry about 3,000 miles out on the seabed when there are earthquakes on the sea floor, when there are lava eruptions on the sea floor. So when we think of infrastructure, we don't just think about the last mile. Uh, we tend to think about um, the broader picture, about ship's captains dropping anchors on the cable. So it's, it's an interesting business to be part of. Uh, and my background has been uh, in companies such as Sun Microsystems, Network Appliance. So the technology industry for me is a familiar place, albeit I'm an accountant, so don't hold that against me. I'm one of those horrible bean counters. Um, at Magnet, we effectively live the cloud, and I've often said um, we, we do enable or we light the cloud. We live it, we use it. Um, most of our platforms are based out in the cloud. We provide services to the end user, whether that be consumer or business, uh, in a cloud-type environment, and whether that's a hosted phone system to the business community, whether that's providing voice services to the government, um, things like Department of Education, um, the HSE, uh, Department of Justice. Um, we provide services also which are being carried and broadcast today uh, over air TV. So it'll be a, a, actually an international first. We were first to market with uh, an over-the-top TV service. So engaging with consumers, anybody can sit here in this conference if the broadband was a little bit faster, if we had our own fibre in here, should we say. Um, you could watch TV, and you can watch TV for free, any of the Irish free channels, free to air channels. You can watch it at home on your smartphone right now on air TV. So providing services to the B2B community, uh, large corporates, government sector, and then the consumer. And in the consumer space, we've certainly garnered a lot of experience over the five years, and now more recently in, in London through the acquisition and expansion in the UK market about how consumers are using this kind of advanced bandwidth. And so we have, a, I say, a very good understanding of the network and the criticality of that network to business models. Um, I think critical for this particular conference is understanding how to protect our customers. And it comes back to the Trojan JCB. So many customers rely on, we have thousands and thousands of business customers rely on us for their last mile connectivity, that critical link, not only to Dublin city centre or Cork or Limerick, but possibly to the US, to Hong Kong. And so that is a fairly heavy burden that rests on our shoulders to make sure we can provide the best in class service where we can. Um, some little facts and, and interesting bites for you to take away, bites and bits. Um, some of our learnings, um, the Yottabyte, I don't know if familiar, many of you are familiar with the Yottabyte. The Yottabyte is one septillion bytes. Um, EA Games' recent announcement in Galway, Bioware, when I was talking to the guys down there about their plans, EA Games and Bioware themselves, and Bioware is the Black Ops division of EA Games, for those of you close enough to it, they talk themselves about consuming one Yottabyte of data. 
just for their gaming platforms, whether that's Star Wars and New Republic and FIFA. Um, the, the amount and type of data they're gathering is enormous. Um, through our own TV platform, if you think of multiple hundreds of thousands of streams coming across, we're not only tracking what users are doing in terms of what they're viewing, we're also tracking what device they're coming from. We're tracking their behavior after they've watched TV, what user goes from what device or from what program to what particular website. The whole concept of big data is something that's becoming very relevant to what we do. And so the one certainty for us and for you sitting out there is that bandwidth consumption by business and consumers is accelerating not decelerating, it's rapidly accelerating with a lot more focus these days, these days on upload speeds. So that's becoming more and more critical. Um, the statistic up there about consumers and, and uh, terabytes, uh, just around about with the latest stats actually is close to the 6% of our customer base, that's residential customers downloading over one and a half terabytes a month. 20% trafficking, downloading over half a terabyte a month and that is growing and accelerating. Every time we turn the dial up, and if you think about it, we own, in, in broad sense, the internet. The only link to the internet in the US and server farms, etc., is across our transatlantic fibers. So as we turn those dials up and allow more bandwidth, all that's happening is consumers consume more and more and more. And so in the marketplace, we offer a, an unlimited product in terms of bandwidth and download, and consumers just keep taking it up. So it's, a, it's giving us a lot of insight into consumer behavior and what's happening out there, and it's certainly blowing away any expectations I had. Um, Coming back to the cyber threat, the theme of, of this morning or this afternoon, the key word I want to focus on is damage to a network. And just make sure when you walk out of this room, it sort of resonates with you about your own physical infrastructure. Because damage is not just about the software damage that might happen, but also the reputational damage that was covered yesterday, um, the damage to your brand, the damage to your business. And so the, um, you know, everybody's talking about the cloud. Um, I think we can all go back as far as 1984 and Bill Joy talking about the network is the computer. So the concept of the cloud isn't exactly the newest thing on planet Earth. But in terms of when you're deploying services or thinking about threats to that infrastructure, you know, there are some basic questions that I certainly talk to clients and prospects about. Um, ring topology. Is everything that you do, is it fail safe? What if one side of that ring fails? If somebody breaks into it, somebody tries to strip that copper, you're aware that there are many physical threats these days here and in the UK and beyond where people are stripping copper out of um, ducting infrastructure and selling it on. So what happens if somebody does that? What's your fail safe mechanism? Um, the plate tectonics is actually a serious point. What happens if your transatlantic carrier, are they offering you a diverse path? What happens if one side of that ring fails? What happens if that subsea volcano erupts and damages your cable? We have four ships on standby uh, in the Atlantic, one off uh, Nova Scotia, one off Bermuda, one in the Bay of Biscay, and one off the west coast of Ireland, who will send down the submarines to pick those cables up. That's a huge physical task. So when you're thinking about your last mile connectivity, see, I would ask you to see through that last mile. Where are you taking your services to? Who are you working with as a client? How are you developing those services? Um, the questions people don't often ask. Um, I think in terms of capacity, the only certainty as I've outlined is that consumers' appetite for capacity is skyrocketing. And we would probably at the forefront in terms of consumer behavior, how consumers take on content, the rapid acceleration and adoption of over-the-top TV content. That has just been astounding to see how they use services like Air TV um, on the go. And, and give you a little example, we get customer support calls from somebody who's uh, watching TV on a smartphone, an iPhone, or a HTC, but the call was actually placed from the Lewis or a bus in town because they left their house and they wanted a seamless experience, so they were watching TV while they're on the Lewis, and their phone does complaining that the Wi-Fi signal had gone down. So there are downsides to being at the forefront of innovation, but you can see how you know, get a sense of consumer behavior and the expectation to be always be connected. And hence, from a security threat perspective, people are always wanting now to be connected. Does that open back doors, back channels into devices? You guys are far more expert in that space than I. Um, the key threat that I talk about, um, it's the Trojan JCB. Think about it as one based on blunt force trauma. Um, it's designed on the core principles of mechanical engineering, um, leverages the knowledge of, uh, should we say, mechanical force. Um, but the most damaging aspect of this is Mayhem MIC, is the operating system called Mayhem MIC. And if I sort of jump forward for a second, you might understand the whole concept of this JCB and Mayhem MIC. This is a classic case of somebody with a JCB, um, even knowing that the infrastructure is there, having it flagged. 
deciding that they dig through this infrastructure. This actually is as after um, three tons of concrete was dug out of the hole. The particular construction firm, when they realized the mistake, poured three tons of concrete out of the, the uh, concrete mixer into it and left the site. And so there were fiber breaks, and it took a good solid day to dig it back out. And so when I go back and we sort of lightheartedly talk about, um, you know, these kind of instances, you know, human error, the Trojan is this big JCB, the host is the JCB, but the most critical part and the, the weak link in the chain is your digger driver who has had a bad experience with his jumbo breakfast roll or is disagreeing with something on the radio and fails to pay attention to what is a critical piece of business infrastructure. And it happens far more frequently than you guys would experience. Manhole covers, trucks going over them drop big metal plates on top of very delicate fibres. Uh, if you drive up along the airport, you'll see lots of uh, the T50 network around Dublin. You'll see these manhole covers tend to rot rattle a lot. And that's because there are buses and trucks, and those things fall down, and those things smash into chambers. So the damage that is being done to networks happens on a daily basis. Um, I have an instance of one particular business who were down for just over four days, Japanese manufacturing firm, 182 staff, could not operate for four days. Why couldn't they operate? Um, the MD was on screaming to me that his link was down, explaining to me or having a go at me that my manufacturing plant is down. In the same way that a cyber breach or some security breach happened, physically this plant could not trade files with Japan. They couldn't build, the CAD files couldn't be transferred. Um, previously, about three months before, that same um, business refused to take a backup link, refused to look at a ring topology in terms of network design. If they had have done, they would have saved themselves close on about 300,000 of lost production. So you get a sense of the ramifications when you think about the damage that can be done by this infamous Trojan JCB. And then for those of you who think about the, um, the, the wireless, well, maybe wireless is a solution to all ills. Two years ago, this is uh, the Dublin Mountains. Um, we have wireless infrastructure within a network as well, and this is a, a station and a mast infrastructure got completely buried in snow. So I just ask you and caution you, when you think about your service provider, you think about your last mile, you think that you should think through and look through who is providing that service. What are the SLAs? What happens if something goes down? Think about consumer behavior. What we're seeing at the forefront is more and more capacity being required by consumers. The th highest cause of customer dissatisfaction in my industry on the consumer side is the loss of a TV signal. Why? Because children can't watch TVs. You can't watch your favorite program. Video content is the highest generator of customer dissatisfaction. Broadband can, can flap and voice can flap a wee bit. People will suffer with Skype and the quality of Skype if they're doing it from a home perspective. They won't do it in business. But in terms of video content, if your network is not robust, um, the quality of your infrastructure is not robust, the quality of your coding is flawed, that is the one thing that will kill your brand and kill it very, very fast. And we know that through bitter experiences. The old phrase, we, the pioneer with the arrows in the back. And we had many arrows in the back by being at the forefront of IPTV and OTT many years ago. So in terms of how we help organizations, this is a, a, a sort of a, a network overview of a, of a large corporate in the Irish context. Simple thing to appreciate in design is making sure you have resiliency, resiliency built in. No single point of failure. If somebody comes and physically attacks, and I say a, a threat to a network is a physical threat also, is making sure you have a resilient architecture embedded in your design. Um, in this case, this is a national um, infrastructure. We also work with some large agencies um, from the UK. So we carry traffic back from various sites around Ireland across our fiber, and we have fiber into the UK as well, a fiber ring. And so we provide resilient routes through. And uh, there's a new fiber link coming from New York to Somerset, uh, the fastest, lowest latency link across the Atlantic. And, and that kind of infrastructure is critical. For those of you who are working with the financial services industry, you're familiar with the demands around picoseconds. Picosecond is one trillionth of a second. Picoseconds are now relevant to high-frequency trading. Um, firms are now deploying high-frequency trading platforms in 40-foot containers. Those 40-foot containers sit on a beachhead um, in places around Ireland close to the fiber. Those 40-foot containers contain server racks, UPS, and aircon. They are sealed containers. The algorithms are downloaded from London. And so when you think about physical breaches thing, and, and, and cyber breaches in terms of security breaches, you now need to think about different models that banks are deploying to trade. There are PhDs sitting in London writing code, but there are the servers with a link, fiber link, between London and a beachhead holding those particular um, servers and transacting. 
So it's understanding the resiliency of that. Um, one particular bank in London, um, it begins with a B, and uh, if I say Bark, uh, it might get it. They attribute about 140 odd million in a year to having a faster broadband speed because they can achieve a trade faster than the next person. So there is an absolute seriousness and criticality to the quality of your infrastructure. Um, one thing we, we don't talk a huge amount of, and I think this audience will understand why, we don't shout from the rafters about DDoS mitigation. Um, so one thing we have from our own network perspective is looking at customers' traffic, and I'll simply say is we ensure that certain types of traffic are black holed. How we go about it, um, I want to talk about it and stick it up on a slide here, but let's just say we are very cognizant of our customers' needs in this particular aspect because some of our larger corporates tend to get targeted on a, on a fairly frequent basis. Um, we also, in terms of um, our PBX, we have a hosted PBX environment, so we work with companies like accountancy firms, um, BDO and Limerick. Uh, we provide voice services for Concern. That if if you're any, any of you ever wanted to get a sense of a global IT organization, um, Concern, who are the large charity, they have about 120 locations around the world. They have two satellites. They have an enormous IT organization or IT network, should we say, in terms of reach and challenges with that network. Um, concerns an organization that is, let's just say, when, when they make pronouncements around um, the Burmese situation or Chinese, organizations like Oxfam and Concern tend to get targeted in a very serious way by uh, foreign governments. And so those organizations need to maintain a very robust architecture. So we work with organizations like that. But on the day-to-day -day basis, smaller, and I think it's on some of the cartoons I've even seen, is small little PBX taps, as I call them, where people get hacked in. One piece that we've learned in time is ensuring we have uh, a sheriff effectively sitting on the network. So we look for call trends, call patterns. You guys will be familiar with this, is ensuring that when we're providing these services, typically the largest volume of our service provision is to the SME. The SME doesn't have security analysts, doesn't have internal intelligence threat analysts. They're relying on a service provider or you guys with your software solutions to detect these aspects. So we deploy kind of a, a sheriff mentality, which is we look for unusual trends. Does this organization typically call out of Mongolia on a Tuesday morning at 2? No, they don't. So we shut that traffic down and try to minimize the exposure. Because clearly one of the great things I've learned is understanding how little your average SME knows and business owner knows about security. And that is the one thing, I think it was said in the previous speaker, is organizations, the vast majority of businesses in the Irish marketplace clearly are SME. They don't have the skill set. So it's, it's in, it is a requirement on operators, service providers, to make sure we assist those organizations as best we can. Um, I think from a context for those who are sort of IT managers or CTOs is the what happens if, who wants their P45 or their pink slip in the States or whatever it might be, how long can your organization survive? Oh, not very long when this happens. Um, so how long, how long can your organization survive without um, a network, not able to send out quotes, emails, all of those aspects? How long can you survive in your role? So it's a pretty serious statement. Um, I don't think anybody in the room here would say that if they were the IT manager or CTO that they would survive very long if they didn't deploy a resilient architecture in how they approach the telecoms, their connectivity needs. So in terms of a uh, final couple of slides to wrap up, um, key considerations, ask yourself again, not just about that last mile. Look at the overall design of the network. Look about the security of the SLA. What physical security is deployed? Who owns the network? Who's managing it? Um, one of the things that we do from a marketplace perspective, again, if you're dealing with smaller businesses, um, a, a little anecdote, my wife had a recruitment agency and uh, before I was with Magnet, uh, the, the line went down for the website, the business was down for four days. Recruitment agencies rely on web and phone. Without web and phone, you're dead. In the water, clients can't contact you, candidates can't contact you. So one thing we do is we offer, a, uh, from a magnet standpoint, is we have said, look, for that marketplace of the SME and, and clearly the larger corporates, we provide a monitored service, a proactive monitored service. So at 8 in the morning, we typically get notified if there's an outage on your line or something's happening on your line. So when you come in at 8.30 or 9 o'clock, we're already in contact with you, either by SMS initially and then a phone call to advise you your system's down or something's gone on with your system. It's a philosophy we deployed at Network Appliance, which was kind of the proactive maintenance, proactive monitoring. It works very, very well. There are very few operators in the market who do that, but it's one thing I'd say is that probably sets us apart is understanding the marketplace that you guys are in, who you're selling to, who you're working for. Um, and it's critical because, again, to the point, the average SME business owner will come in and will see their credit card system payment machine is down. 
or their email is down and they won't know what's happened and they will panic and they will hound you with phone calls and their business is going to suffer. So whatever you can do to um, facilitate an easy solution, an easy fix to reinforce confidence is critical. So hence we offer four and eight hour SLAs in that regard. And uh, in terms of more sophisticated organizations, we then provide monitoring of the actual traffic across the network uh, and giving customers you know, an idea of what sort of profile is it BitTorrent traffic. Because the number of customers I've gone to who've complained and said, Magnet, your service is crap and I'm really annoyed with you guys. And we've shown them a report about the type of traffic and then it's been revealed that, well, a bunch of employees in the organization have been uh, downloading uh, movies and playing gaming online and there are some embarrassed conversations and faces at the other side of the table once that's realized. So what we try and do is facilitate as much open, honest, but easily understandable communication with the end user, the customer, um, so their experience is, is robust. Where we can, we facilitate a secure, resilient architecture. We're always open to discuss and work in partnership with you guys in the room in terms of possibly how we can work with you. Um, are there opportunities for you to engage with you know, closer to 5,000 business customers as businesses, large and small corporates? So happy to engage, happy to talk um, further on what we can do. And just in summary, I'll say beware of the guy with the JCB um, and beware particularly with the, the operating system of the JCB I call Mayhem Mick. Um, ensure your network is IP enabled and I call that the idiot proof enabled. Um, we all talk about IP capabilities. In my view, the greatest threat to businesses is that idiot, whether it's the person who answers the elephant earlier on or the guy who decides to dig through your, your, your fiber connection. Make sure that you have that resilient solution. And uh, again, if you want to talk to us, um, anything other than free coffee, we're happy to chat. Um, I think the biscuits were thrown in free this time as well, so I'm not quite sure. So we're doing both coffee and biscuits now as our new business line. And for that, I thank you, and uh, hopefully talk to you later on. Thank you.